Indie games are weird. At least they can be, and I think that's a good thing. That's why I'm constantly on the lookout for new games that make it their mission to do things a little differently than the rest of the crowd. So in this series, I'll be exploring previews, demos, and early access builds of indie titles that are wacky, curious, and bizarre. So for better or worse, here's another weird indie game. Crab Champions is a real game. It's a real game about a gun-toting crab that flips and strafes and throws grenades and occasionally does parkour. And it's out in early access right now. In a more useful description, Crab Champions is a third-person roguelike shooter. The immediate comparison here that many have used is Risk of Rain with crabs. Yikes. But I've never played Risk of Rain, so I went into this game with an untainted perception of what it was supposed to be. And what it ended up being is... pretty fun, actually. The bread and butter of Crab Champions is its freeform combat and movement, and the best thing the game does is stay out of its own way to allow the player to focus on those components. When you boot up the game, there's not even a menu screen. You're just plopped down onto a tropical island hub world with a few obvious points of interest to get you going. It's here where you'll select your weapon, there's many to choose from but most you'll have to unlock, and then find the floating icon that will warp you into your first run. Runs in Crab Champions utilize a familiar formula we've seen in other roguelikes. You'll have to clear three different biomes that each consist of ten stages. Some of these are clear all the enemies style, some have you surviving a horde for a certain amount of time, some take you back to the shop to purchase upgrades, and then of course things conclude with a boss fight. As of now, the order of the stages never changes, even across biomes, which is a bit odd to me. Mixing that up feels like an easy way to inject some diversity into what is currently a very predictable experience. Maybe that'll change as the game continues its development, but for now you should expect to be playing through this commonplace structure quite a bit. And you probably will play it quite a bit, because Crab Champions is the type of game that understands the basics of the roguelike formula and focuses heavily on those concepts, resulting in an experience that will almost certainly tap into the one more run mindset that this genre is so well known for. Each stage is a simple burst of enjoyable combat and movement, and integrated throughout that is a stacking progression system that's built to turn your little crab into a machine of complete destruction. The gameplay itself is easy to understand and can be picked up by anyone, but it's also the type where I could imagine some people getting ridiculously good at this over time, swiftly bouncing between enemies and pulling off mid-air skill shots and grenade throws. The upgrade system is a huge part of Crab Champions, with a chest at the end of each stage providing you with multiple power-ups, only one of which you can select before you move on. Most of these are not terribly noteworthy, as a large percentage of them are standard stat boosts like a higher chance for critical hits or increased reload speeds and the like. But some of the more rare upgrades definitely stand out, like having a perk that spawns fire turrets at the start of each level, or one that turns your reload into a knockback explosion that's perfect for getting out of close quarters. For the most part, each modification is a slight tweak, but you'll collect so many of them throughout a single run that they eventually stack on top of one another to create some really wild builds and some absolutely insane levels of power as you reach the later game. You can tell that the simple nature of the basic combat was built as a canvas on which to layer the upgrade system. And that idea in general is a good way to describe Crab Champions. Basic but solid foundations that have the potential to combine into something fun. Because everything here is well executed, but it all feels very familiar. So what is it exactly that makes Crab Champions unique? I mean, it's no surprise that the eye-catching feature of this game is that you play as a crab. Whether this was intended as a clever marketing choice or not, it certainly worked as one, as it's unlikely Crab Champions would have gained even a fraction of the momentum that it's seen recently if it wasn't for this decision. Things like this stand out. And in a sea of shooters that all look and feel the same, I think gamers appreciate someone who's willing to try something that on the surface seems ridiculous. The question is, does being a crab add anything to the game? Is there anything in Crab Champions that relies on or is enhanced by the type of character you play as? And the answer is no, not really at all. This game could have easily been Crocodile Champions, Raccoon Champions, or Giraffe Champions. Your character is quite literally just a skin that makes playing the game feel a little bit more quirky. The weapons and attacks are not crustacean related in any way, and the power-ups are all basic skills and tweaks added to that arsenal. The enemies that start out as other crabs quickly turn into hordes of randomness featuring things like flying skulls that shoot fireballs and other foes that could be found in any other game. 
Even the initial island aesthetic that you think the game might steer into by utilizing other crabby themed locales immediately falls back onto the tried and true biome structure, with your character being transported to snow covered or volcanic landscapes as you progress. So no, the crab in Crab Champions, seemingly the game's hallmark feature, is not actually a feature at all. But the result of all that probably doesn't matter, because this game is still a lot of fun to play. Even in its early state, Crab Champions features fluid movement, fast-paced gunplay, and a power fantasy progression system that ultimately leads to some outrageous runs. Like any good roguelike with a similar power-up system, part of the fun here is seeing what perks are presented to you as you clear each stage, and then taking chances on and experimenting with and stacking those perks to create a fully unique build. The main question mark that's glaringly present right now is, will this be enough? Is there enough depth to this combat? Is the structure of the game too familiar? Will the full game contain enough features that keep players coming back to prevent this from being just the flash in the pan? Of course, more and more of this will be addressed as the game continues development, with developer Noise Storm indicating that they're planning on adding much more content that increases variety and replay value, as well as the fact that this game will likely be in early access for one to two years before a full version is released. It's not reasonable to expect the level of complexity and polish we see in a game like Hades, Slay the Spire, or Dead Cells from a solo game developer making a game about crabs. But I do worry that even as the full game nears completion, this one is in danger of being forgotten amongst the sea of roguelikes out there. Until then though, you're likely to have a good time with it, and Noise Storm should be given a lot of credit already for building something so solid. So yeah, this game is weird. I like it. I'd compare the experience maybe to something like Vampire Survivors, obviously not at all in the way it plays, but in the fact that it's kind of a burst of mindless fun with a cool aesthetic and some satisfying features, most notably a powerful progression system that gets amusingly out of hand. If you enjoy frantic roguelike shooters and want to try a familiar but well-built game in the same realm, I don't think you'll regret picking this one up. If you're not into those types of games, however, there's nothing about this one in particular that's going to change your mind. If you want to check out Crab Champions and try it for yourself, I'll leave a link to the game's Steam page in the description below. Again, it's still in early access and is actively being worked on, so manage your expectations accordingly. If nothing else though, it's always nice to support indie developers who are willing and able to try something a little different. Thanks for watching! If you've got recommendations for upcoming indie titles that are just the right amount of weird, feel free to leave them in the comments so I can check them out for myself and possibly feature them on an upcoming episode.